You know, well, ever since uh, Tuesday, the 22nd, by us, you know, it's been raining nonstop. Now, you know, not major downpour kind of stuff like you would get in Florida or something like that, a Gulf Coast kind of thing, but it's been this misty, gray, dreary, blah, ever since the 22nd. And um, today we've gotten a little respite. And Juan and his uh, his um, company here, they're um, uh, uh, you know using um, air air things you know uh, to the, to the grass and whatnot while everything is wet and soggy. So if you hear that in the background, that's what it is. Uh, Juan and his company, whatever it, I forget what his company is called, but they're doing lawn maintenance. Uh, well, everything is wet and soggy. <laughs> uh, you needed to know that, by the way. <laughs> Good morning, brethren, Church of the Living God. Hi. Lord willing, this, um, this video is going to pro kind of be kind of a prequel to a video that hopefully will be coming either this Sunday the 27th or the 29th. We'll see what our Lord does. The 28th of this month, uh, we're going to be incommunicado. We got things we got to do on the 28th, which is Monday, unfortunately. But um, today, dear brethren, I'd like us to consider you and I. Proverbs chapter 23, verses 1 on to verse 8. And of course, we'll have to read verse 9. Have you ever been reading the scriptures? And the Lord just opens things up to you. Just just like, wow. Things you are already aware of, but he reminds you of them in his word. Has that ever happened to you? It's a beautiful thing. And I just want to share with you some of the things that our Lord shared with me. Uh, and today is the 25th. But... Um, while reading Psalm, uh, excuse me, Proverb 23. Like I said, we're going to we're going to go over this. We're going to be reading verses 1 under verse 8, and we, of course, we have to read verse 9. So please get your authorized version of the scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version. Follow me along. Follow me along. Please follow me along, word for word, verse by verse. Check me out. Make sure I ain't lying to you. Check me out. Okay? Beg your pardon, brethren. Sorry about that. All right. Proverbs 23. I'm going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 8, and we are also going to read verse 9. Like I said, um, the Lord just opened this up to me you know, while we were reading this together. And um, just, has the Lord ever with any of you taken just one simple verse and then just dismantled that in pieces for you and explained every little thing that was uh, he was saying in just one verse? It's amazing how God's word is like that. You could take one verse and just go off and so many directions with just one verse. Proverbs chapter 23, verses 1 on to verse 8, and we will read verse 9. You'll see why I'm saying it like that. Beginning at verse 1. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee? In the previous video, um, we discussed how man has a penchant to worship. Man has a penchant to worship things. And um, unfortunately, most people, especially Christians, have a penchant for idolatry. That was the previous video. But man has a penchant. A strong desire to worship. To worship what? That's the question. 
we ought to worship our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Hence, one of the reasons why our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, created us, okay, to have fellowship with Him, okay, to worship Him, okay, amen. So, we, whether you want to accept this or not, you have that penchant within you, that strong desiring to worship, to have fellowship, okay? And with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, ought to be, ought to be that yearning in you. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, hmm. when thou sittest to eat with a ruler, there are two pervasive um, kingdoms, you could say. We're not building a kingdom today, okay? But there are two pervasive kings, right? Pervasive. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and also Satan. Now we today, in this dispensation, we are not building a kingdom. Blah, no. There are a lot of people out there who are trying to build kingdoms for themselves and are succeeding. Yes, they are. But we as the Church of the Living God, we are not building a kingdom. Okay? That's not what we're here for. We are here to preach the gospel, to have fellowship with our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Satan, on the other hand, he's building a kingdom. A kingdom that is rapidly coming, approaching. Wherein that man of sin, the son of perdition, whom Satan is going to inhabit, is going to be the ruler of that said kingdom. So you see all his ministers, kingdom building, so to speak. So there are two. There's, there's no middle ground. It's either or. You're either on the Lord's side or you're not. So there are two. There are two ways. One our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, to the way of the world, Satan. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, when thou sittest, when thou sittest, Psalm 1, Psalm 1, the very first Psalm, when thou sittest, who, what, what has your attention? Hmm? What are you sitting before? What is feeding you? Who is feeding you? Psalm 1, verses 1 and 2. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But, in other words, verse 1, um, Blessed is the man that walketh not. Blessed is the man who is not part of this, part of the world. Whose affection whose penchant for worship is not associated with worldly things. Okay? But his delight is in the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord. Where do you find the law? Here. Okay? Remember uh, Psalm 1, written for a different dispensation, but for us, for our instruction and in righteousness. Okay? But his delight is in the law of the Lord. His delight is in the Lord. Okay? How to live according to the scriptures in this dispensation. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. So see a contrast. We're going to be seeing quite a few contrasts here in this video. Okay? So, blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Luke chapter 10. Check this out. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verses 38 
on to verse 42. Sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but yet blessed is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Mm. And the one who doesn't walk in the way with sinners and sit in the seat of the scornful, they're blessed. Mm. But see, if you're not doing that, you ought to be going after the Lord. Okay? Sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Check this out. Luke chapter 10, verses 38 on verse 42. Now it came to pass as they went, that he, Jesus, entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Did you catch that? Okay? And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Sat at Jesus' feet. Are you sitting at the feet of Jesus and hearing his word? Are you sitting in the seat of the scornful? Hmm. But Martha, note these contrasts here. You're going to see a lot of delicious little contrasts today. But Martha was cumbered about much serving. And came to him and said, Lord, can you just picture that? Lord, <laughs> dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Oh, about doing all these things. But one thing is needful. You're worried about uh, making sure this is right, this is right, and, and putting this forth and doing that forth and making sure that everything lines up to something that you imagine to be so. That you imagine to be so. Okay? Self-will. Cumbered. Or, excuse me, careful and troubled about many things. Self-willed. But one thing is needful. One thing is needful. You, you know, you're worried about all, you know... You're worried about all this uh, stuff for the, uh, me being here? One thing is needful. Make yourself a sandwich. <laughs> Get a bag of chips or something. But it's deeper than that. Because what does our Lord say? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. You see? But one thing is needful. And Mary... And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. See, sometimes we get a little too cumbered about worldly things, don't we? We are in the world. We are not of the world. If you have a spouse, you, you do have to mind worldly things. Paul even warns us about that. You do have to mind worldly things. We are in the world. We are not of the world, okay? But see, we can't be troubled too much about worldly things. We need to sit at the feet of Jesus and hear his word. And what does our Lord say of that? But one thing is needful, okay? Most, like we just well, like just said to you, most will be right away. It's like, one thing is needful. Get a sandwich or something. But no, one thing is needful. Remember, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And Mary hath chosen that good part. And this is not his mother. Okay? Which shall not be taken away from her. And this is not the other Mary Catholic that Joseph... Did, did, oh, you Catholics. So where are you sitting? Where are you sitting? Are you sitting at the feet of Jesus? Hearing his word? Because hmm? the Lord is that spirit, the spirit of truth who will guide you into all truth. 
Are you sure you're sitting at his feet? Or are you sitting in the seat of the scornful? When thou sittest to eat with a ruler. A little bit more on this. And Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. Verses 7 on to verse 11. And he put forth a parable to those which were bidden, when he marked how they chose out the chief rooms, saying unto them, When thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him. And he that bade thee, and him come, and say to thee, Give this man place, and thou being with shame, to take the lowest room. But when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room. And when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher. Then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. See, how many people, Christians, only seek the Lord just as if all he is is someone to give you things. And th hey, that's true. Our Lord gives you himself. God so loved that he gave. God, shall, God will provide himself a lamb. For a burnt offering. Yes, he will. God is, yes, he gives. But again, is that the only reason why you're seeking him? You might say it's good enough. Um, and I'll, I'll agree to that, with that to an extent. It's good enough to start. But once you, I mean, once you realize of just how nasty and how wicked and how inept you truly are, that love for the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, ought to grow more and more. Can you love him in your poverty? Or do you only love him because you are in prosperity? I wonder about so many. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Hmm. And see the contrast. Those, these Christians, want to be first. Want to be head on high. Yeah. So they go to Jesus. <laughs> Which Jesus? They go to Jesus. That they may arrive to the upper plateau of things. And get, get out, from, uh, out from the squalors, right? set themselves on high. Hmm. Seeking Jesus for all the wrong things. Hmm. Where are you sitting? Why are you sitting where you're sitting? Hmm. Second Samuel. Now, check this out. Now, see here in verse 11, for whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, humbled. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And then we see in this parable, you know, hey, come. The spirit and the bride say, come. Whosoever thirst, come, right? Come. Got to be broken. Got to have godly sorrow. You better fear the Lord. Or you're, you're the classic thing, booting the door out of the way. And the door is Jesus Christ. You're booting him out of the way so you can climb up another way. But see, when you go with your, you are number one to our Lord Jesus Christ, and you sit as a king in your own little head, mm, are you in the seat of the scornful? Well, let's look at a contrast of this. Second Samuel, or excuse me, First Samuel, I think. First Samuel. All right. I have a habit of writing on the wrong letters. Or wrong numbers, yes. First Samuel chapter twenty-five. 
verses 4 on to verse 11. This is when David was in the wilderness after King Saul done went crazy and trying to kill David, okay? And this is after the death of Samuel. And David was in the wilderness. And David came upon the herdmen and the flocks of Nabal. That's the backstory. Check this out. 1 Samuel 25, verses 4 on to verse 11. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler. Hmm. Hmm. And remember, a religion of self is a religion of antichrist. And David heard in the wilderness, uh, verses 4 on to verse 11. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did shear his sheep. And David sent out ten young men. And David said unto the young men, Get you up to Carmel, and go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus shall ye say to him, That liveth in prosperity. Peace be both to thee, and peace be to thine house, and peace be unto all that thou hast. And now I have heard that thou hast shears, now thy shepherds, which were with us, we hurt them not, neither was there aught missing unto them, all the while they were in Carmel. Ask thy young men, and they will shew thee. Wherefore, let the young men find favor in thine eyes, for we come in a good day. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever cometh to thine hand, unto thy servant, and to thy son David. David was good unto uh, Nabal's young men, like he just said. He watched after him, make sure nothing happened to him. I, I'm sure if like a, 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 not a coyote, but a bear or a wolf or something, I'm sure they, you know, stuff like that. David was showing charity. David was showing charity, which is self-sacrifice, unto Nabal. And David, because he was showing that unto Nabal, he, all he wanted was sustenance. He wasn't wanting anything big. All he was, it's like his needs. It's like, hey, I got these guys, my men. Okay, okay we, you know, we did, can you help us? Get, get, you know, hey, one thing is needful, remember? Right? Right? One thing is needful. Hey, can you spare us just a little something? Not too much to ask for the charity that David shooed onto the ball. Verse 9. And when David's young men came, they spake to Nabal according to all those words in the name of David and ceased. Check this out. Sitteth in the seat of the scornful? Hmm? Hmm. He who exalts himself shall be abased, but he who humbleth himself shall be exalted. And Nabal answered David's servants and said, Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh, my, 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 that I have killed for my shears? And give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? Hmm. See those personal pronouns there? <laughs> then I shall I take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my shears and give it unto men whom I no, not Wednesday be. Oh boy! Wow. Well, as the name the ball suggests, we'll look at that here in a minute. Yeah. After the charity, after the charity, self-sacrifice that David shewed onto the ball and his servants, and all David wanted was one thing that was needful. Just once, just something, sustenance. And the ball, you know, thinking, 
pretty high of himself. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, hmm. God giveth grace unto the lowly. But remember, Leviathan is a king over all the children of what? Come on, you know it. Pride. So naturally, so naturally, King David was a little perturbed. And King David actually wanted to go and kill Nabal. Uh, after Nabal gave him that answer, we were, we're not going to read this day, King David's like, oi, oi, vey, really? Really? You know, we, we did this, we, we sacrificed of ourselves to watch your guys, and all we want is just a little something, something, and you do fine. Come on, everybody, we're gonna go kill this guy. Okay, we're gonna go kill him. And in verse twenty-two, so and more also do God unto the enemies of David. If I leave of all that pertain to him by the morning light, any that pisseth against the wall, David was pretty irritated. He was angry. He was gonna kill him. And can you blame him? Not that we, not that we do that, but it's like okay, you know. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, died, buried, and rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. For you, whether you want to accept that or not, He shed His blood on the cross to atone for your sin because it was your sin that put Him on that cross. Okay. And all he wants from you is to come to him on his terms. Mm. You, you see the contrast there? But because Nabal was churlish, you know, king over all the children of pride, you know, when thou sittest to eat with a ruler, when thou sittest, yeah, David was pretty hot. Now let's read verses 25 on to verse 27. Here in 1 Samuel chapter 25. Now Abigail, a true godly woman, a woman of God, when she found out about David's going to go kill Nabal, her husband, she was like, whoa, ho, oh, oh, ho, wow. I, okay, okay, come on, guys. Give me stuff. Come on, let me get, come on, let me go before David comes and kills everybody. So like, come on, come on. Um, you could say, you can make the argument uh, she was also probably fearing for her own life. Uh, well, he says uh, in verse 22, uh, any that pisseth against the wall. That's more reference onto male. Okay. Okay. Just so you know. So was she fearing her own self? Probably not. But Abigail, a true godly woman, a woman of God. Good example for you sisters to learn from too. She's like, okay, she had a rotten husband, Nabal. Okay. Nabal. And he treated David poorly. She finds out, like I said, she's like, whoa, 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 time out, man. Give me, come on, come on, come on, guys, come on, give me the stuff. I'm going out there, I'm going to save it, y'all, okay? Verses 25 on to verse 27. This is Abigail, okay? I think it is Abigail. Yes, yes, Abigail, okay? Verses 25 on to verse 27. She goes to before David. Let's read verse 24. And fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me, let this iniquity be. And let not, and let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine audience and hear the words of thine handmaid. Let not, my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial. She's talking about her own husband. Keep that in mind. Even Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. Nabal, folly. Um, are you not a, what was it? Uh, answer not a fool according to his folly. We're going we're to read that today. Answer not a fool according to his folly. Lest thou be like unto him. Get it? See, Nabal kind of 
to David after the charity, self-sacrifice that David chewed on to Nabal. David was going to be just like Nabal. Like I've told you before, when you fight fire with fire, what wins? Fire. Who, no matter who is wielding it. Okay? But folly. Let's continue in verse 25. Nabal is his name and folly is with him. But I thine handmaid saw not the young men of my Lord whom thou didst send. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord hath withholden thee from coming to shed blood. Yes, yes. Our Lord says unto uh, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Mm -hmm. And from avenging thyself with thine own hand, now let thine enemies and they that seek evil to my and they that seek evil to my Lord be as Nabal, her own husband. That that ain't a blight on Abigail. That's just showing how rotten Nabal truly was. And now, verse 27, this blessing which thine handmaid hath brought unto my Lord, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. Okay? So, the peace offering, if you will, as we just saw. Okay? And now let's skip a little to verses 32 on to verse 38. Okay? Abigail quenches the fire. David was going to answer a fool according to his folly. He's going to be like unto him. He was going to fight fire with fire. Abigail comes like, whoa, whoa. The man's like, chill. Here, leave him alone. It's up to God to repay. Verses 32 on to verse 38 now. David's reaction when he came to his senses. And David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me. And blessed be thy advice. And blessed be thou, which hast kept me this day from coming to shed blood and from avenging myself with mine own hand. And let me see, in the does that have a, a reference for uh, Deuteronomy? No, but hey, that's okay. Yeah, vengeance is mine. I will repay saith the Lord. Have you ever been thinking about doing something and then the Lord, and this is for Church of the Living God, obviously, and the Lord sends a brother or even a sister, it's like, uh, hey, maybe you shouldn't do that. You know, maybe, maybe like, let's talk a little. Maybe you shouldn't. And then the Lord, you know, and the Lord is that spirit. If you're of the Church of the Living God, the Lord is in you. Then the Lord's like, hey, I, I sent him or her. Uh, listen, uh, wake up. Oh, has that, has that ever happened to you? you? You are about to answer a fool according to his folly, and then a dear brother says to you, let it go. Let it go. You know what they're doing. You know. Okay? And you've even said yourself, Brad, how many times have you taken the bait of these idiots and gone and fight fire with fire? Let it go. Let go. It's not up to you to avenge. Their foot will slide in due time. Has that ever happened to any of you? Hmm? You are about to go on a whatever, and the Lord sends a brother or a sister. It's like, hey, stop. Think a little. Okay? Verse 34. And see, David's like, <laughs> praise the Lord. Yeah, the praise the Lord. Vengeance is, belongs to the Lord. Thank you. I'm going to let it go. Okay, verse 34. For in very deed, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which hath kept me back from hurting thee, from hurting thee, except thou hadst, ha except thou hadst hasted and come to meet me, surely there had not been left unto Nabal by the morning light any that pisseth against the wall. Now, right there, it says that David would have probably slaughtered everybody. But again, you got to remember. Uh, 
If a woman is able to pisseth against the wall. <laughs> okay, that we'll, we'll leave that alone, okay? But see, in going to kill all the men, they would have taken the women captive, okay? That kind of thing. So, again, again, okay? Because, see, Abigail, even though she knew Nabal was evil, knew what was going to come from David killing everybody. And she would be being a captive herself, probably. Well, let's continue. Verse 35. So David received of her hand that which she had brought him, and said unto her, Go up in peace to thine house. See, I have hearkened to thy voice, and have accepted thy person. And Abigail came to Nabal. Hold on. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. What was before Nabal? Oh, all the blessings of worldly things. But he was Nabal. Folly was in him. Isn't that interesting? And Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house. Like the feast of a king? I will be like the Most High? Ye shall be his gods. Uh -uh -uh. Knowing good and evil, right? How many, how many of these Christians are boasting themselves, acting as if they're king of their own little kingdom? How many? Are you like that? I'm king of my own house. Better watch it there, buddy. Better watch it. Yes, the husband is the head over the wife. Yes. <laughs> but do you rule with an iron scepter? Oh, boy. <laughs> Let's continue. And Abigail came to Nabal, and behold, he held a feast in his house, like the feast of a king, king over the children of pride. And Nabal's heart was merry within him, for he was very drunken. Wherefore she told him nothing, less or more, until the morning light. But it came to pass in the morning, and verse 36, right away, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we will die. Okay? Having a feast like a king. Again, that rings true to the words uh, that Isaiah talks about, or is it Jeremiah? I, I get those confused sometimes. Let us eat, it's, it's Isaiah. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. Hmm. But it came to pass in the morning when the wine was gone out of Nabal, and his wife had told him these things, that his heart died within him, and he became as a stone. Many people like to say that he either had a stroke or a heart attack or something like that. Because if you become as a stone, you're just... And it came to pass about ten days after that the Lord, that the Lord smote Nabal that he died. Mm. So here's an example of someone who was shown charity. And all in that charity, all they wanted was a little something. One thing wasn't equal. Just a sandwich or something. The ball's like, David going to avenge himself? The Lord's like, n n n no, hey, hey, Abigail, go, go. come on, come on, I got something. Go, 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 go. Okay? Hmm. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler. Hmm. A ruler. A ruler. What ruler is that? Hmm, I wonder. Go now to 1 Timothy chapter 6. Of course, we have to go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. We want verses 13 on to verse 16. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, 
and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession before a king, the king of kings, Lord of, uh, Lord of lords, before a king of men, Pontius Pilate. Hmm. That thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his times he shall shew, who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, this will come in play with uh, the other video coming up. To whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. When thou sittest to eat with the ruler. Mm. There are two rulers, basically. God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Who is the true King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Yes, he is. Then you have the little G-God of this world, which is t uh, typified in the ball, the little G-God of this world. And of course, the charity of David. Okay, did you see the contrast there in what we saw in reading about the ball, David and Abigail? Yeah. What ruler? When thou sittest to eat with the ruler, what ruler are you sitting and eating with? What ruler is feeding you? What is that ruler feeding you? Huh? Which Jesus are you which Jesus are you sitting for? The one who is of the scriptures or the one of the world who is the, uh, who is of that man of sin, the son of perdition, who is of Satan? Hmm? Which who are you sitting before? Go to John chapter 18. John chapter 18, okay? John 18, we want verses 33 on to verse 37. Another contrast here. Another contrast here. Okay? Check this out. John chapter 18, verses 33 on to verse 37. Okay? Uh, we just read about how Paul mentions about how he stood before Pontius Pilate. Okay? John 18, verses 33... On to verse 37. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation, and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, We're not building kingdoms today. The kingdom of God is spiritual. The kingdom of heaven is actual physical. Okay? Okay? Watch out for these people who are kingdom builders. Whether it's, you know, in their church buildings or their own little military compound, whatever it is. Okay? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Meaning, now he's talking about the actual physical kingdom. That his kingdom is not of this world. Why? Because he's about to go to the cross. The Jews rejected the kingdom of heaven that he was offering. The actual physical, literal kingdom where he's sitting and ruling, reigning as king. They rejected that, hence he's going to the cross. Okay, so that's what he means in verse 36. Okay, the actual physical is what he is talking about. Okay, verse 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world. He offered the kingdom of heaven, the physical, actual, literal kingdom unto the Jews. But they rejected it. And they wanted Barabbas, or Barabbas, or as it is said, Barabbas, okay? <laughs> Thou sayest that I am a king. 
To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world. Interesting about Barabbas, or Barsa Barabbas or whatever, he was a thief. And instead of the kingdom of heaven, instead of their God, the Jews booted the door out the way and chose a thief instead. Wow, we, oh, we can go, and, oh, so many rabbits off of that. But <laughs> watch out for someone who is uh, <clears throat> booting the door. Be careful. They ain't even a Christian. Watch out for that, okay? Let's continue. Yes, let's read that again. Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. And just, just this one part, just this one part. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? <laughs> couldn't see that, of course. Of course you couldn't see it. Because Pilate only saw in man and flesh. I don't for one second believe that Pontius Pilate was saved. And in heaven. No way. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. You look up historically, historically, not scripturally, but you look up historically the exploits of Pontius Pilate, even after this apparently, dead man's in hell. Dead man's in hell. But anyway, Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? And in another part they say, we have no king but Caesar. Then they cried all again, saying, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas, now Barabbas, excuse me, now Barabbas was a robber, a thief. You know, you boot the door out of the way, being a thief and climb up another way. Very telling, very telling. What ruler are you sitting before? What ruler is feeding you? What is he feeding you? Hmm? And of course, Revelation chapter 19, we have to come here about who is the ultimate, who is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You ain't going to get much better. It's impossible. Uh, Revelation 19, verses 11, on to verse 16. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful, capital F, and True. What is truth? And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, where that man of sin, the son of perdition, in uh, Revelation chapter 6, he goes forth conquering to conquer with just a crown on his head and having an arrow with no bows, also on a white horse, counterfeit, that man of sin, the son of perdition, erroneously referred to as the Antichrist. Okay? Find me the Antichrist in Scripture. You're not going to. Okay? Yes. Verse 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture, article of clothing, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Capital W, Word of God. Seven times capital W word appears. Every time you see a capital W word, every seven times you see it, it is always a reference unto our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, our Father. Okay? So, and his name is called the capital W, Word of God. And the the word was made flesh. Okay? <laughs> this is Jesus Christ. 
And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. This is the loving Jesus that all the Christians are preaching, right? No. See, this is the true Jesus Christ, God our Father of Scripture. The Jesus that they are preaching to you people is of Christianity. God loves you. God's not mad at you. God wants to bless you. Blah, 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 blah. But foregoing his faithful and true and in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, burning, piercing. Mm. Verse 16, And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Hmm. King of kings, Lord of lords. So right there we see King of kings, Lord of lords. And who is this? The word of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. They're not their own individual person. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. That would make three gods, Catholic. No matter how you want to uh, slice it, you Trinitarians, you do preach and believe in three gods. Three divine persons. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. These three are one. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? God the Father is the soul. The Word made flesh. And the Holy Ghost is the Spirit. Okay? Spirit, soul, and body. One. One being. Okay? One. He is the King of kings. Lord of lords. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. So, Jesus, God our Father, is the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. The King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Okay? He is God. But there's another ruler out there. Appointed so for judgment against a lost world and against you lost people. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We want verses 3 and 4. Yeah. But if our gospel be hid, the true gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, okay, it is hid to them that are lost and have chosen themselves this counterfeit Jesus who is going to, who is that man of sin, the son of perdition, eventually in, uh, in, during the time of Jacob's trouble when he is revealed. Okay, hence Satan is going to be indwelling that man of sin, the son of perdition. So the other Jesus that people are believing on, other than who is, is Satan. Okay, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the little G God of this world hath blinded the minds, the minds. What did Satan say to Eve? That your eyes will be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So wait, they can see with their eyes, but their minds are blinded. Isn't that interesting? In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on to them. Mm. And who is this God of this world? You read Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. Uh, I will be like the Most High, O Lucifer, Satan, Satan who is the accuser of the brethren. Uh, people, by the way, Satan, Lucifer are one being, okay? One being, okay? Satan and Lucifer are not two different entities, okay? There's so many names, you know, like, oh, Mr. Nobody, uh, <laughs> that thing in Hebrew, I'll wait, uh, 
second John, whatever. Yeah, there's so many names, but they're just one person, okay? One being, I should say, about Satan, okay? Okay, Satan and Lucifer are not separate entities. Just one, okay? Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind, okay? But who is the little she got of this world? Satan, Lucifer, okay? Lucifer. Son of the morning, not morning star. Okay? So, when thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. Hmm. And Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. We want verses 2 on to verse 3. Wherein time past ye walked according to the course of this world. Okay. Uh, let's read verse 1, okay? Uh, and first in Ephesians chapter 2. And you hath he quickened. Who hath he made alive? Quickened. Made alive. Those whom are saved. Born again. New creatures in Christ Jesus, okay? Talking to saved people about saved people. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Those who follow the little G God of this world are dead in trespasses and sins. Where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, past tense, because you're new creatures in Christ Jesus, if you are, if you are of the church of the living God, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. The spirit, that spirit of Antichrist, Satan. Okay? Children of disobedience. The prince of the power of the air. That's Satan, Lucifer. Okay, that old serpent, the devil, Satan, okay, one being, okay, all right, come on now. And children of disobedience, like we've discussed before, if you've heard the gospel one time and reject it, you're a child of disobedience, you're a child of wrath, okay? That doesn't mean that you can't still get saved, but if you die... As a child, as a as a child of disobedience, child of wrath, you're going to hell. Okay. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature natural, not regenerate. The children of wrath, even as others. And think about Nabal. Okay? Think about Nabal, who lived in the lust of his flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, eating himself uh, fat, drinking himself drunk, sitting as a king in his own little mind. I am a king! Which ruler are you sitting before, man? You gotta remember, Satan is counterfeit. Oh, and that what which is satanic is so often veiled with that which is Christian. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Go to John chapter twelve. John chapter twelve, verses twenty-eight on to verse thirty-three. Twenty-eight on to verse thirty-three. See, Jesus, who is God our Father, is King of kings, Lord of lords. He is God, okay? He is the ruler, okay? He is the ruler. Satan cannot harm those are, who are his without the Lord giving, them, giving him permission to do so, okay? Okay? John chapter 12, verses 28 on to verse 33. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it, and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it, said that it thundered. Others said, an angel, an angel spake to him. And see, verse 29 right there, when the redemption of the purchase possession, when our Lord says, come up hither. We who are of the church of the living God are going to hear our name. Brad, come up hither. Alexander, come up hither. Okay. Whatever, okay? We're going to hear our name. 
How our Lord is going to say all of our names at the same time individually, he's got, he can do that. But see, we are going to hear our names called, come up hither. Well, others, you know, the Christians that get left behind, sound like thunder. Oh, hey, where'd you go? Okay, good verse for that. But let's continue. Jesus answered and said, this voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world, Satan, be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Oh, see, that means everyone's got... No, no, no. When he is crucified, the way of salvation in this dispensation is plainly made uh, obvious for you. Anybody can be saved. Anybody, unlike what Mr. Calvin taught, anybody can be saved. You just have to go to him on his terms, not booting the door out of the way and climbing up some other way, proving yourself a despicable thief and liar. Okay? All right? Yes. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men onto me. Salvation is available to all. Is everyone going to get saved? No. Why? Because they don't want to come to him on his terms. No. They want to boot the door and shout through the crack out of the way. They want to boot the door. Who is our Lord Jesus Christ out of the way? Climb up some other way. Thieves and robbers. Hence, you boot the door, shout through the crack. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Serving Satan. What ruler are you sitting before? Again, okay? Now, go to John chapter 14. Verses 27 on to verse 30. Our Lord Jesus Christ speaking, obviously. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. See, these devils... People who are Christians who boot the door out of the way, they have no true peace. They get peace from worldly things through fleshly desires and fleshly avenues from doing things, works in the flesh, okay? Okay? Yes, we have the church of the living God. Yes, we can uh, be satisfied with things in the flesh. Yes, but see, our peace, our fulfillment comes from within because our Lord lives within us. That seal until the day of redemption. Lost people, their peace comes from worldly things. That's why do you think they always have to fulfill it? Keep filling it, keep filling it with worldly things. They have no peace. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Let's continue. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away, and come on, come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. The soul is greater than what you are looking at. Okay? Mr. Ruckman even got this one right. Okay? You are seeing the skin suit. That is what you are looking at right now. Okay? The actual me, you are not seeing. Okay? But you are seeing the skin suit. Okay? The soul is greater. So when he says, for my father is greater than I. Okay? Okay? That's what he means. Okay? And also to verse 28 says shows us that they weren't looking forward to the cross all the way back in the book of uh, Genesis because he said if ye loved me ye would rejoice but no they're like no Lord don't 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 Peter you know don't 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 do that don't no far be this from you if they were looking forward to the cross all the way back in Genesis like people like Stephen Anderson and some of these easy easy believism wicked heretic devils like to tell you then they would have been like praise you Lord thank you that you're going to die for me yes I'm sad but you're doing it for my sake praise you Lord you're doing it 
to because you loved and you gave. Okay? You loved and you gave. You're doing it to wipe out sin. Okay? Yes. God did that for us. Yes. God did that for you. But see, if you don't go to him on his terms uh, to the cross, God's love is not for you. His wrath is for you. You're a child of disobedience. See? So no, they were not, again, looking forward to the cross. Like rabbit, don't you? Let's continue. Or was that what we were going to read to? No, we were going to read to verse 30. And now I have told you that before it come to pass, that when it has come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. Yes, this is their hour and the power of darkness. They have nothing to do with our Lord Jesus Christ. They only take the name Christians, which the world labeled us, and we never labeled ourselves as. Okay? They have nothing to do with our Lord Jesus Christ. Those who boot the door out of the way. Okay? They have nothing to do with us. Hey, you're the one who left yourself open for that, so I'm going to use it. Okay? Uh, and now, go to John chapter 16. Verses 7 on to verse 14. Again, again, they weren't looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament. There were types, symbols of it, yes, the, the doorposts and stuff like that in the Passover, but they weren't looking forward to it. They didn't know about it until it was revealed afterward. Okay, John 16, verses 7 on to verse 14. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear, bear them now. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear. That shall he speak, and when he sh and he will shew you things to come. And he says, "I will not leave you comfortless." And the spirit of the Lord, okay, and the Lord is that spirit, the Comforter, okay. So it was expedient for him to go away, because when he can go away, he himself would send the Comforter, okay. So again. They weren't looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament. Okay, they weren't. Okay, but it was expedient for our Lord to go away. And the Comforter, who is the Holy Ghost, will reveal, will guide us into all truth. Right? Yes, he, for he will guide you into all truth. And what will he do? He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness, of judgment, of sin, of righteousness, of judgment. Okay? That's the Lord, excuse me, that's the Lord living within you, which they don't have. Then again, I got to ask you, which ruler are you sitting with? The King of kings, Lord of lords, or the little G God of this world? And go to Joshua, Joshua chapter 24. This is just one verse. <laughs> By the way, isn't that something? This is just one verse. This is how it works, brethren. Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24. Verses 14 on to verse 15. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. Hmm. What is before thee? 
Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 on to verse 15. Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the little g gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt the world, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve. You can't sit on the fence forever. You actually sitting on the fence, you've already kind of made your choice and you're serving the little g-god of this world. Remember, there's no middle ground. You're either or, okay? You're either or. At least with some of these devils here on YouTube, at least you can say they have made their choice. They've chosen Satan, but they have made their choice. Okay? Those of you, it's like, well, I gotta think of for think about it for a while. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. You ain't gonna think of nothing. You have, like the one song said, if you choose not to make a choice, you still have made a choice. Indifference. It's gonna send a lot of people to hell. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. And, okay, when thou sittest to eat with the ruler... What ruler are you sitting before? What is this ruler that you are sitting before feeding you? With fleshly, worldly things? Or comparing spiritual things with spiritual? What do these two rulers offer? You might say, well, Brad, there's something. No, no. It's either or. There is no option C. There's no gray area. It's white or black. It's simple. If you choose not to decide, you have still made a choice. And unfortunately, you're not choosing. You have already chosen the God of this world. But what are these rulers offering you? Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Got to remember, like uh, we're, we're going to be looking at uh, some parts in uh, the Sermon on the Mount. You got to remember, these are before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Doctrinally in the Old Testament. Okay? Doctrinally still in the Old Testament. Under the law. Okay? Under the law. All right? These are in our instructions in righteousness. Okay, but what we're going to look at, what is this king? What are these rulers offering you? Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 on to verse 30. Now this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. He was speaking unto Jews, okay? But we need to read this. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Heavy laden with sin. You know, like uh, John Bunyan's masterful book uh, with Christian who has the thing on his back, okay? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Not from me. Yes, we learn from the Lord. The spirit of truth will guide you into all truth, and the Lord is that spirit. Yes, but we are to learn of him, not merely from him. See, that's the thing. People are learning from. Learning from who? What Jesus? We are to learn of him, not merely from him. Because, see, if you're just seeking to learn from him and not of him, that's when Satan can come in, transformed as an angel of light. Okay? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. 
For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Okay? And go to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. John chapter 10 is a very significant uh, chapter within the uh, gospel accounts because in John chapter 10, our Lord is making reference, one, makes a reference to the redemption of the purchased possession, and also two, is cl cl clearly making reference onto the coming dispensation that we are in today. Okay? But John chapter 10, okay, verses 27 on to verse 30. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave me, gave them me. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? The Word was made flesh, okay? My Father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. It doesn't say in essence or anything nonsense like that. One. One God. Spirit, soul, and body. Hmm. Oh, and and, and why, while we're here, uh, verse 9 and 10 in, first, in John chapter 10. I am the door. Jesus Christ is the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in, go in through the door, which certain people are booting the door out of the way and the door is Jesus Christ. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For someone who is as brilliant, you're pretty stupid. You know? Yeah. I am the door. But you're booting the door out of the way, huh? <laughs> yeah. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and go in through the door and go out the redemption of the purchased possession and find pasture. The thief cometh not, the thief who boots the door and shouts through the crack, okay? The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And that doesn't mean stuff, okay? It doesn't mean stuff. Stuff will come, yes. Yes, it will, but it doesn't mean stuff. See, Jesus is offering you himself. Because it is only he who can cleanse you and take away that sin that separates you. That's going to put you in hell. Okay? And also, now, go to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. This is after the death, burial, and resurrection. The penalty for sin was paid with the blood of Jesus Christ. Say by the blood of the crucified one. Okay? But 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3, on to verse 6. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. And Mr. Calvin should have read this. Who will have all men to be saved. And to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself. God shall provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. God wants all, God would have all men to be saved. But there again, God's not forcing salvation or reprobation, as Mr. Calvin teaches, on anyone. You've got to choose. You need to choose. What ruler are you sitting before? And what, what is he putting before you? Jesus Christ. Life with him. His righteousness, forgiveness, correction, rebuke, yes. That, that chastisement may bring forth the peaceable fruits of righteousness, yes. Yes. But God would have all men to be saved. Yes, he would. Yes, he would. 
but not everybody's going to. Why? Because people are booting the door out of the way. They don't like the real Jesus. And they want to climb up another way, proving themselves to be a thief and a liar. Yeah. And also, also, okay. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. This might be a two-part video. <laughs> 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 25 and 26. Those of us of the church of the living God, in our witness and our testimony unto the lost, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. Yeah, you're booting the door out of the way and uh, climbing up some other way. You're not truly saved. You're opposing yourself. You are your own worst enemy. And Satan loves for you to be like that. Yes, he does. If God, peradventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Mm -hmm. And of course, we need to go to 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3, not 1 John, right? 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. Meaning God lives outside of our time. Time is not unto God as it is unto you and I. Okay? God's eternal. Timeless. He had no beginning. He has no end. Okay? He is. I am that I am. Okay? The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, promise that we're sealed until their day of redemption. It's like, oh boy, Lord, come on. Not slack. Like I said, you and I as a church of the living God, we wanted the redemption to happen yesterday. I have to keep reminding myself and you, who wasn't saved yesterday? whom our Lord saved today, who would have been left behind. Remember the charity of David? Charity which is self-sacrifice? Not liberty, you wicked little heretic! Hmm? The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. Yes, we all want to get out of here. But we can't think of ourselves. Like I said, who got saved today that wasn't saved yesterday? Okay? But is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. This is what the Lord is offering us. This is what the Lord is offering. The true God, the true. King of kings, Lord of lords. Okay? Colossians chapter 3. And as the church of the living God, saved, born again, converted, new creatures in Christ Jesus. Okay? When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. What is before thee? Who are you sitting before? Okay? What is he giving you? What is he feeding you with? And what? What is before thee? When you eat of his dainties, what are the fruits of those? Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. If ye then be risen with Christ, new creatures, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above. Not on things on this earth like Nabal. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Yeah, yeah, I am talking to you this about uh, to you about this again. You, you, you think this is over? Huh? You think you're just gonna go on a uh, status quo? Things get back to normal. You're crazy. You're crazy. Romans chapter 6, verses 19, under the close of the chapter. 
I speak after the manner of men. Why? Because of the infirmity of your flesh. And of course, you read Romans chapter 8, verses 1 on to verse 4. Okay? Do that on your own time, if you can read. Okay? I I'm sorry. There are those of you who are legitimate, who are seeking and stuff like that. Yes, you are. Uh, there are other people who have already made their choice. Uh, I speak after the manner of men, because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness, and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holy otherness, separate, holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, servants, not slaves, as Mr. MacArthur says, for when ye were the servants of sin, and he got his from Calvin, you know, reprobate doctrine, that Calvin. That's the reprobate doctrine is basically Calvinism that the new IFB guys and stuff like that have basically championed as their own. But it was actually Calvin who, as far as I've read thus far, came up with it. Ye were free from righteousness, for when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. What is before thee? Who are you sitting before? Okay. What is he feeding you with? And what is before thee? What is before you? What ruler are you sitting before? Which ruler? What is before you? With our Lord Jesus Christ's life, with him in eternity. Satan. Worldly stuff. For the end of those things. Is death. That's why you know when you come across these scoundrel devils. Wish them. Wish them the best life that they can have. Hopefully they get intoxicated with all their stupefying actions that they take. Hopefully they're having the best life. Because this is the best life they're ever going to get. These, those types are to be pitied. Truly to be pitied. Okay? Let's continue. But now be made free from sin and become servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Contrast between these two rulers. Okay? The end and the end everlasting life. You're going to have everlasting life if you go to hell. Yes, you are. You're going to have everlasting life if you go to heaven with our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. But everlasting life with our Lord. See, when you die, your spirit is going to either go to be with the Lord or go and be in hell. And in hell, you're going to burn forever and ever and ever and ever and ever in darkness with weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay? And fire, you're burning. Okay? But with our Lord, joy unspeakable. See the contrasts. Okay? But now be made free from sin and become servants to God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin, oh, is death. Contrast. Satan's going to pay you with sin. Because in him is all sin. Satan. Absolutely. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Matthew chapter 16. One verse. Matthew chapter 16, one verse. And this is, this is about all these devils, all these uh, Christians, okay? What is before thee? Matthew chapter 16, verse 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, 
Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Flesh. Now, serving our Lord Jesus Christ, being of the church of the living God, being of his bones and of his flesh, yes, he will provide for you carnal things. But that is not the measure and the end of everything. That is not what we set our eyes on. These devils who boot the door out of the way. These Christians in the buildings and stuff like that. This is what they're all about. Worldly, fleshly things. And Satan is right there to provide it for you. Oh, you know he is. Because remember... What did he say in the, in the Garden of Eden? Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 5. He said, Yea, hath God said? Hmm? And what does, he, what does he offer on to Eve? Okay. Remember we already looked at that the little G God of this world had blinded the minds of those that believe not? Didn't say their eyes. Why? Because what does Satan offer Eve? In Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 on to verse 5. <laughs> ye shall not surely die. You disobey what God said. Ye shall not surely die, but your eyes will be opened. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Be as gods. God knows what is good and evil. And before that, before that temptation and they disobeying God and eating of the fruit of the tree, okay, they only knew what was good. And then they disobeyed and sinned. Brought about by Satan, not at gunpoint to Eve, okay? Not at gunpoint. Eve chose, and Adam chose. They were at fault, okay? But then, as gods, now they know what is good and evil. Because only God knows what is truly good and what is truly evil. But see, Satan says, your eyes will be open. Hence, he's blinded the minds of these devils. And he also, and this we're going to look at. We didn't look in Genesis chapter 3 because we've been over that a countless amount of times. You of the church of the living God ought to know that by heart. You ought to be able to quote that by now. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 13 on to verse 15. 2 Corinthians 11 verses 15, uh, 13 on to verse 15. For such, as, for such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Transforming themselves. They are not made a new creature, but they are transforming themselves man-made. You are because you say you are. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into, a, into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Whose end shall be according to their works. They work in flesh. They work in the world. Nothing spiritual. The only spirituality they have is that spirit of Antichrist, lying signs and wonders. False miracles. Okay? Manipulation. Stuff like that. You see what these, what these two rulers, what are they setting before you? One who is the Lord of Lords, King of Kings, God, our Father, he's offering you every, everything. But the little G, God of this world, down here, what is he offering you? Matthew chapter 4. Ah, you thought we were going to go to Luke, didn't you? <laughs> Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. What is Satan offering? What is before you? Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 and verse 11. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward in hunger. Now remember, all the temptations of Satan were all aimed at the flesh. Flesh, because God cannot be tempted with evil. 
but God manifests in the flesh. The flesh can be tempted. Not God himself who dwelt in that flesh. The word became flesh. The word was made flesh. Okay, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. The word was made flesh. Okay, the flesh could be tempted. Okay? Flesh is sinful. God dwelling in that flesh is not. Okay? I know that's really hard for a lot of you to understand. Okay? But whatever. Verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Because what? God, their, their God is their belly? Bread? Belly? Flesh? But he answered and said, it is written. This is how you answer these devils. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. He's like, I can do that too. For it is written. He shall give his angels a uh, charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash, dash thy foot against the stone. Taking it out of context, twisting it, okay? Twisting it, okay? Jesus said unto him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And again, the devil taketh them up into an exceeding high mountain and sheweth them all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee. If thou wilt fall down and worship me. And then Luke says, All shall be thine. Because it was given unto him for judgment. Okay, he is the little G God of this world. It's been given unto him. For judgment against this world. What is Jesus say? Then saith, then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Satan offers you all this. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, offers you all that himself. What is before thee? And you got to remember the, the gothic, satanic stuff, uh, Anton LaVey, Baphomet, all these satanic cults, okay, with their goat, mat, that, that's, no. True Satanism. It's Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, ministers of righteousness, Roman Catholicism. True Satanism is Christianity. Oh! What those words used to mean a hundred years ago are hardly what they mean now. Okay? Hardly. Hardly. And I know for a fact, it is because of the name Christian, Christianity, that many will not come to the Lord Jesus Christ because of the testimony of Satan's church. See, true Satanism is religious. True Satanism are ministers of righteousness. Don't forget it. Don't forget that. Is the so-called religion that you're in, is it really a religion that sits at the feet of Jesus Here's his word. Or are you just being fed with worldly things? Verse 2. <laughs> yeah, yeah. An hour and a half. One verse. Verse 2 in Proverbs 23. Let's read verse 1 again. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. Put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite covetous greedy we are to be we are to covet the best gifts but see those gifts that we covet from the lord are not meant to be hoarded for ourselves brethren but to share with others okay okay 
We, the gifts our Lord gives us, are there to be given unto others of the church of the living God, not to be hoarded. Okay? Put a knife to your throat. If you be a man given to appetite. Matthew chapter 5. Now, like I said, like I said, we are reading in the Sermon on the Mount. You've got to remember, the Sermon on the Mount is so how it's going to be, is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven, the 1,000-year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ in Jerusalem. Okay? You see faith mentioned one time in the Sermon on the Mount, and it's in the form of a rebuke. The Sermon on the Mount is all works. Okay, because in the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be works because whoop, you're going to be able to see Jesus Christ sitting on the throne. Okay, but we are looking at this for instruction in righteousness. Okay, the Sermon on the Mount, beautiful, lovely, a lot rich for us today in instruction in righteousness. Doctrinally, eh, no, it's all works. That's how it's going to be in the kingdom of heaven. And remember, kingdom builders like Catholics. They love this and try to say this is for us, doctrine for us today. It is not. It is not. But for our instruction in righteousness, very different. Very different. Okay? Instruction in righteousness. Whose righteousness? His righteousness. Instruction, how we are to live godly in Christ Jesus. Doctrinally, as pertaining to salvation. That's the difference, okay? But Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 under verse 12. Okay? And put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. What's your appetite for? Huh? Is that is that something to be only satisfied with what you have, meek and needful? Or is it covetous, boastful, greedy, I want, I want, I want? Verses 3 under verse 12 in Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Remember, kingdom of heaven is the actual, physical, literal kingdom. Okay? Okay? This is it. We're looking at this for our instruction in righteousness. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Whose righteousness? For they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Whose righteousness? For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Kind of tells you who, well, whose righteousness right there. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Now that is something that happens today for a lot of us. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Are you seeking his righteousness? Uh, Matthew chapter 6, still in the Sermon on the Mount, verses 30 on to verse 34. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? The only time faith is mentioned in the entire Sermon on the Mount, and see, it's in the form of a rebuke. Okay? Now, what this is talking about, you know, the miracle of the fishies and the loaves, all right? Our Lord as king, God as king, could miraculously provide for the needs of his people, okay? He was offering that unto the Jews, okay? Therefore take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewith shall we be clothed? Why? Because the king is going to be there and he can, with his power, because he's God, Okay, he made fish come out of the uh, apostles' hands just like nothing, and bread too. Okay, he could supernaturally, he can and will supernaturally pro uh, provide for his people during the kingdom of heaven. Okay, he provides for us today through the body of Christ, the church of the living God, through each other, yes. But here it's different because him as king providing, see. For all, after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. The Lord knows what you need. Wants a many. Needs a few.
but seek first the kingdom of God. Now that's very significant here because this is about the kingdom of heaven, the thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, the actual physical, literal kingdom. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, the spiritual. See, even our Lord does that because he wrote the book, okay? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and whose righteousness? Are you looking at that? His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. <laughs> yeah, sure will. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And John chapter 4. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Yeah, this is probably going to be a two-part video, okay? Probably. I don't prefer doing two-part videos, but this is something that... So, John chapter 4. Where are we? Verses 7 on to verse 14. The woman at the well. And put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. See, it's okay as a church of the living God to seek his righteousness, to covet spiritual gifts that we can share unto others because why? We are not the standard. But see, when people go to Christianity only seeking to glorify themselves, but to, you know, to take that knife to your throat if you're a man given to appetite, if you're greedy, if you're covetous of the wrong things. Then cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith, unto, saith to thee, Give me to drink, Thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would give thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, well, yeah, 14. Thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou, see, now see, this woman was only seen in fleshly things. And see, our Lord was answering her from heavenly things. And isn't it interesting that if you continue reading this, this woman got it. Whereas Nicodemus at first didn't. And I believe Nicodemus is up there. Absolutely. But let's continue. Verse 12. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us, this, gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus, saith, Jesus answer, answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Mere water that came from the earth. Is that not true? But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. See, our Lord Jesus Christ satisfies. He fulfills. You want, if anything, you want a gift from our Lord that you may share it with other people, not to hoard it yourself. And when the Lord is within you, nothing from this world will satisfy. Nothing satisfies as our God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ satisfies and what comes from his table. But see, what comes from the table of this world that's something else. And of course, go to John chapter 7 about this. John chapter 7, verses 37 on to verse 39. Again, our Lord Jesus Christ saying, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come! 
living water. Not of greed, but of glory unto our Lord Jesus Christ. But see, now there's a contrast here. Okay? And put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. He who humbles himself shall be exalted. But, uh, you know, he who humbles himself shall be exalted. He who exalts himself shall be humbled. See? Anything that the Lord gives us as the church of the living God, we are to share with others. And woe to you, stingy. And I'm not talking about money. Far be it. But you have a gift. Whatever that gift is, I'm not talking about this. I'm not talking about money. Not at all. You have the gift of encouragement. You have the gift of um, friendship. Gift, whatever it is. And you're stingy and holding on to it for, of yourself. For yourself. Making excuses. Don't do that. Don't do that. Whatever the Lord has called you to, do it. Share with the brethren. Share with others. Whatever it is, get, get, get your brains away from the money. Okay? See, that is what the devils want you to focus on. When they talk, when they, the Christians, talk to you like this, like we are speaking right away. And why? Because of Catholicism, because of the devils. They have it taught you in your mind to immediately think of this, the money. It's deeper than that. There are those who have the gift of research. A dearly, dearly beloved sister who, who could find Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> who, she could. She could find Jimmy Hoffa, I bet you. Okay? A brother who, uh, who is an encouragement. A dear friend of mine who is nothing but encouragement. My best friend, like-minded. Gift of analyzing. There are so many gifts that you have, all of you of the Church of the Living God. Start sharing them. Please, start sharing them. Okay? But the contrast is now. Oh, yeah. Like I said, we're going to be looking at quite a few contrasts here. Go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 34. Oh, yeah. Ezekiel chapter 34. There were examples of this in the Old Testament, of course. I mean, in the New Testament. But this is what the Lord gave me. This is how he showed this to me. And I'm sharing it with you. See? Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 1 on verse 10. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? And what are they feeding you? Twisting scriptures to get money out of you? Hmm? Twisting scriptures with tithing. Yeah. Yeah. Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The diseased have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick. Neither have ye bound up that which was broken. Neither have ye brought again that which was driven away. Neither have ye sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. Where's the spirit of forgiveness in some of you? Hmm? A brother have sinned against you and where's the spirit of forgiveness? Want to hold on to a grudge all your life, huh? huh? Well, what about you, Brad? Uh, there are people who, uh, I don't have grudges against them, but they're not my brethren. <laughs> they're not my brethren. Um, they have bigger things to worry about when they're standing at the great white throne of judgment, okay? But where's the spirit of compassion? Where's the spirit of mercy, okay? Where is that in a lot of you? 
the thing that we also need to be aware of, brethren, is, yes, these times are wicked. These are evil times. You can't trust people. No, you can't. But you mustn't let that make you into a hard-hearted Nabal. And how many of you have become so hard-hearted re recently? Hey, I, hey I, I've been struggling with that myself. But see, you got to remember. You got to remember from whence you came. That one time that was you. Yes, these are the last days before the redemption of the purchased possession. Yes, we know the scriptures. But you've got to be on your guard also not to become a stone-hearted individual like Nabal. You've got to remember compassion. Who got saved today? Who didn't get saved? Who wasn't saved yesterday? One thing you lack. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth. And none did search or seek after them. Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became meat to every beast of the field because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will, I will require my flock at their hand, and cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. And while we're here, verse 16 on to verse 19. I will seek that which was lost. And he did. He has. He is. And bring again that which was driven away. And will bind up that which was broken. And will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. Have you ever considered that some of these Christians that are prospering, so greatly right now and rubbing it in your face and just feasting of all these uh, delicates. Have you ever considered that might be a form of judgment upon them from the Lord? <laughs> hey, you want this world so bad? Here you go. Here you go. Have you ever considered that? And as for you, O oh my flock, saith the Lord God, behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the he-goats. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture, but ye must tread down your but ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk the deep waters, but ye must foul the residue with your feet. And as for my flock. They have eaten that which ye have trodden with your feet. And they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. Walked all over them. Fouled with their feet. You know, uh, when they used, they would wear sandals back there in Jerusalem, in uh, Israel, and the sand, and they you hear washing their feet because the sand and the dust and the dirt, get, and then they go and stomp in the water and people are drinking that oh you can compare that on to all those bibles down there fouled with their feet and put a knife to thy throat if thou be a man given to appetite so see of the lord self-sacrifice unto serving and hence joy satan gluttony self-serving 
not serving of self, self-serving. See the contrast? Are you a man given to appetite? What appetite do you have? What ruler are you sitting before? Make steak, don't it? Yeah, sure does, doesn't it? Verse 3 in Proverbs chapter 23. Got to consider now. Uh, let's see. Let's continue. Be not desirous of his dainty meats, of his dainties, excuse me, for they are deceitful meat. Who's dainties? Well, we already read Matthew chapter 4, and in Luke chapter 4, uh, Matthew chapter 4, and in Luke chapter 4, Satan says, all this will I give unto you, because it is, let's go there. And notice how it says, be not desirous of his dainties. We are to desire the dainties of the Lord. Yes, like the uh, the one uh, Syophrician, I believe it was, woman said of the Lord when the Lord called her a dog. You know, it's like, yes, Lord, but the dogs eat up the crumbs that come from the master's table. Okay, we are to desire the dainties of the Lord, but the dainties that come from Satan, no, 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 no. And while we're here, yes, we are going to look at Luke chapter 4. Okay, Luke chapter 4, verses 5 and 7. Okay. And the devil take, uh, taking him up into an high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and uh, the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Kind of like the ball. Okay? If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meats. Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Verses 1 on to verse 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul. See how that starts? And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Watch it complaining and griping. Okay? Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. They who are sick need not the physician. Oh, no. Those who, excuse me, those who are whole need not the physician. But those who are sick, sick with sin. Okay? Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Okay? We already read it in Romans chapter 6. Okay? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things. So that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Hmm. We want the dainties of the Lord. But now Psalm 81. Psalm 81. Verses 8. On to the close of the psalm. Psalm 81. Verses 8 on to verse 16. Hear, O my people, and I will testify of thee. O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me, there shall no strange God be in thee. Neither shalt thou worship any strange god. Oh, like the one you're, you're looking at? Or yeah, yeah, a statue. Or an idea. Or a principle. Or whatever. Whatever your penchant to idolatry is. Okay? I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But My people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. This is the way. Walk ye in it. No, we won't do that. We're going to do whatever we want to do. Because since we left off from giving cakes unto Mary, excuse me, the Queen of Heaven, and offering her drink offerings, Jeremiah chapter 44. Okay? So I gave them up unto their own heart's lusts, and they walked in their own counsels again. 
You know, some of these Christians out there who are doing well right now, so well, who have thousands of reasons why to smile and rub it in your face, have you ever considered that they've been given over to their own heart's lusts and that it's a judgment from God? Have you considered that? Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have, should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat and with the honey and with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. Honey out of the rock, now that's a lowercase r. But is not our Lord sweet to the taste? Behold, his countenance is lovely. Song of Solomon's, you know. His, his, his apple was sweet to my taste, or however that goes in the Song of Songs. But they would none of him. No, they want to boot the door and sit like the ball, their own little king over their own petty little kingdom. Proverbs, and here's a couple of one verse uh, references. Proverbs 20. Proverbs 20. <laughs> we'll use this one. Proverbs 20. Verse 7. Proverbs. Where are we? 17. <laughs> Proverbs 20, verse 17. Bread of deceit is sweet to a man. But afterwards, his mouth shall be filled with gravel. Gravel. Yeah. And then Proverbs 28, verse 22. He that hasteth to be rich hath an evil eye, and considereth not that poverty shall come upon him. Mm. Desire not his dainties. Desire not the gifts and fruits that Satan is offering, hidden under the guise of Christian, or whatever it is, you know, whatever it is. Verse 4 in Proverbs 23. Labor not to be rich, cease from thine own wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> and 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, not the concordance bread. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15, on to verse 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. And First Timothy, chapter 6, you see how we did that? Of course we had to go, of course... But of course, you got to go to 1 Timothy when talking about this. Verses 3 on to verse 10, of course. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, uh, 1 Timothy 6, verses 3 on to verse 10, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. Gain is godliness. Oh yeah, you've gained so much, now you're godly, other separate than, up here in the upper echelon, right? Sorry to use one of your catchphrases, you devil, but it fits. Hmm? 
But godliness with contentment is great gain. Like uh, John the Baptist said to the people who came to him, to the soldiers, be content with what you have, okay? Be content with your wages and be content with what you have or something like that. Godliness with contentment, not coveting, okay? God gives you gifts, you share them, whatever they are, okay? For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Those who will be rich. Not just in money, oh, and lands and properties and followings and stocks and bonds and cars and suits of apparel. Yeah. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Yeah, and of course, Job talks about naked came I into this world and naked will I return hither. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And he lost everything and he still gave praise to the Lord. But go to Ezekiel chapter two. Ezekiel chapter two. Ezekiel chapter two. Uh, not Ezekiel, excuse me. Ecclesiastes chapter 2. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Okay? Those who will be rich get drowned in many hurtful lusts and stuff like that. And the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred, through the, uh, erred in the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verses 9 on to verse 11. Here's someone who could actually talk. Solomon. So I was great, and I increased, and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me. They were not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. My wisdom remained with me. Isn't that interesting? It says my wisdom. And the wisdom that he had originally that... His wisdom was given of the Lord, but yet he attributes my wisdom remained with me. Isn't that something? Hmm. And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy. Yeah. For my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion in all, of all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. Vanity of vanities. Without God, without God, the author thereof, it's all vanity. You're not taking anything with you. Yes, you can leave things on to your children, but you're not taking any of this with you. Verse 5 in uh, Proverbs 23. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. Proverbs 27. Proverbs 27, verses 20 on to verse 24. Hmm. Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. As the fining pot for silver and the furnace for gold, 
so is a man to his praise. Though thou shouldest bray a fool in a mortar among wheat with the pestle, yet will not his foolishness depart from him. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks, and look well to thy herds, for riches are not forever. And doth the crown king the ball endure to every generation? When you're crowned king, nothing. And Psalm 49. Psalm 49. Psalm 49. Yeah. Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. What are you being fed? Who are you sitting before? Huh? What is he feeding you? Are you desiring the dainties that come from our Lord Jesus Christ? Or are you being fed of the dainties that come from the world and Satan? You need to consider these things. Psalm 49. Verses 6 under verse 11. They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. None of them can by any means redeem his brother or give to God a ransom for him. For the redemption of their soul is precious and it ceaseth forever. And it was by the blood of Jesus Christ that we have been redeemed. Uh, that's in 1 Peter chapter 1. I believe that talks about that. That he should still live forever and not see corruption. What are we reading to? 11. For, for he seeth that wise men die. Likewise the fool and the brutish person perish. And leave their wealth to others. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever. And their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Got to read verse 12. Nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not. He is like the beasts that perish. And while we're in Psalm 49, verses 16 on to verse 20. Brethren, remember, these Christians who have arrived, they've made it. They're now professional. They're made to look like they're the real deal now. They've got all their stuff. In it. They got their thousands of reasons to smile. They got it worse than you and I do. They got it a lot worse. Why? Be not, a, be not thou afraid when one is made rich, when the glory of his house is increased. For when he dieth, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. Remember that. Though while he lived, he blessed his soul, and men will praise thee when thou doest well to thyself. Yeah, they sure will, won't they? He shall go to the generation of his fathers. They shall never see light. Man that is in, an, is in honor and understandeth not, departing from evil, is like the beasts that perish. Verse 6. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats, an evil eye. Oh, oh, oh. Matthew chapter 6. See how we did that? Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 on to verse 24. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Who we'll boot the door out of the way, you know. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. It's very telling with some of these Christians where their heart is. When all they want to talk to you about is worldly things and rub it in your face. Yeah. Look at these Christians in the buildings. Some of these Christian channels. Wow. Wow. The light of the body is the eye. If, the, if therefore thine eye be single, focused on the Lord, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil... You know, having your eyes open, open, knowing good and evil, okay? But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If, therefore, the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? And, of course, 
like what was quoted in the uh, previous video in the comment. Great comment, by the way. No man can serve two masters. When thou sittest to eat with a ruler, can sit there diligently what is before thee? No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Who are you serving? Are you sure you're serving God? Are you examining yourself? I hope you are. And of course, Matthew 20, verse 15, just one verse. Matthew 20, verse 15. Hmm. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil because I am good and there is only one good and that is God? Is your eye focused on God? You know, you're focused on God? Huh? Or are you focused on the things of the world? Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24. Come on, fingers work with me. Proverbs 24. Then the... <laughs> Proverbs 24, <laughs> verses 1 and 2. Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them, for their hearts study of destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. Hmm. Eat, not, eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. Proverbs 1. Verses 10 on to verse 19. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow, swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, and they lay wait for their own blood. They, they'll, they'll betray themselves. They'll stab each other in the back. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, who taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Eat thou not the bread of him that hath an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. Verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. You are if you say you are, right? Save yourself by you, you're believing, or you saved yourself because you called on the name of the Lord without brokenness, contrition, or fear of the Lord. Yeah. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee. But his heart, his heart is not with thee. This, this right here. Ezekiel 28. Oh, remember Nabal? Hmm? Remember Nabal? Ezekiel 28, verses 1 on verse 10. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man, and not God. Oh, how many need to be reminded of that? Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. 
There is no secret that they can hide from thee. Yeah, you're pretty smart, ain't you? How can someone be so, as smart as you be so stupid? <laughs> with thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic, thou hast increased thy riches and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Nabal. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, Behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness, they shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God, I am, a, I am God, but thou shalt be a man and no God, in the hand of him that slayeth thee, thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers. For I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Oh boy. Oh boy. And then if you continue on, our Lord is actually making a reference onto Satan who was controlling King Tyrus. <laughs> For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Think you're your own little God, don't you? Think you're something special. Oh, oh, be careful, friend. Oh, and, 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 and Revelation chapter 18. Yeah, oh yeah, this, yeah. Revelation chapter 18. Verses one on to verse 10. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication. This is talking about Roman Catholicism, by the way. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are wax rich through the abundance of her delicacies. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. And the political leaders, they're not going to Jerusalem to meet the head rabbi. They're all meeting uh, Francis, the puppet pope to Sosa. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. And the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and live deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen. <laughs> yeah, and am no widow. I shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine. And she shall utterly be, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they see this, when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Oh, yeah. Again, brethren, like I told you, you have to consider those, you know, these Christians who are doing well when everyone else is poor and can't do anything and barely barely pay their bills and they are rubbing in your face with their big smiles. And yeah, you ever consider? That's a form of judgment. I'm not talking about one individual either. I'm talking about all these Christians that you are seeing, these successful church-building Christians. Not just about one person, but about many. Just so you know. And 
men will say, will think well of thee when thou hast done well for thyself, right? Yeah. Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 31 on to verse 33. My fingers will get there. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Think you're God. You think you're saved, but you're not. Hmm? Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. You know? Falsely, they they pretend to, you know, you think that they care about you because they're giving you things. No. No. And they come unto thee, uh, Ezekiel 33, verses 31 on to verse 33. And they come unto thee as my people cometh. And they sit before thee as my people. And they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they shew much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. Whom the Lord abhorreth. And lo, thou art unto them a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, oh, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. Hmm. For as he thinketh in his heart, in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Verse 8 The morsel which thou hast eaten shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. Proverbs. 28. See that? Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28. Verses 18 on to verse 21. Whoso walketh uprightly shall be saved, but he that is perverse in his way shall fall at once. Contrast. He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread. But he that followeth after vain persons shall have poverty enough. Contrast. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. But he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Again, contrast. To have respect for of persons is not good. For for a piece of bread that man will transgress. And what bread? <laughs> is being offered you the bread of life or the Eucharist? Huh? The bread from of our Lord Jesus Christ himself or of the world and Satan? Hmm? And of course, you know, Proverbs 23 here, verses 20 and 21. Be not among wine bibbers, amongst riotous eaters of flesh, for the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. <laughs> wine bibbers, you know, the cup of wine with the Catholic, riotous eaters of the flesh who worship flesh. Really good source of example of evil you are, by the way. Really good source of exam of evil you are, yeah. And of course, you got to remember too, brethren, that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. Okay? Remember, Satan accused, uh, Satan accused Job. You know, like in Job chapter 1 and 2, he's like, have you not put a hedge around Job? Okay? You won't let me touch him. Let me touch him. Let me take everything he has and he'll curse you to your face. He does that. He doesn't. And Job doesn't. Then Satan's like, skin for skin, yea. But touch his bone and his flesh, and he'll curse you to your face. See, Satan is the accuser of the brethren. So, speak not, uh, the morsel which thou hast eaten, shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words? Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26. See, Satan, Satan is a master at distraction. 
And like we've talked before, Satan wants to distract you. One of the things that some of these devils are doing, um, their little minions will go about making all this noise, trying to divert your attention to pay attention to them, drawing your attention away from their head, the head of the pyramid, remember? Okay, so the little uh, left-hand mouthpiece will make all this stink, do all these videos, say all this stuff, say, hey, look at me, look at me, trying to divert your attention away from the master. Hence, for an example, I'm not even going to give one thought to that disgusting little monkey. Because, see, what that little monkey is doing, he's making all this, hi, hi, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at all these videos, all these useless, stupid videos that I do, look at me, look at me, trying to divert attention away from off the master. Yeah, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work, boy. I'm on to it. Have been for a while. But we got to remember, brethren, Proverbs 26. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. People will give you gifts. This, uh, this happened to me with someone in Canada. It's like, I've given you all this stuff, so you, here, here, you owe me now, right? Yeah, yeah. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The morsel which thou hast eaten, shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words. See, when you take the bait and you fight fire with fire, that's pretty bad. I, I failed at that. I failed at that. And Proverbs chapter 26, verses 9 on to verse 12. As a thorn goeth up into the hand of a drunkard, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. The great God that formed all things doth reward the fool and rewardeth transgressors. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. Seest thou a man why a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. Oh, there are so many people who won't even consider. I just believed. I'm saved. But you live like a devil. How could you be saved? Wait a minute. There's something wrong there. Do you? I'm not going to consider. There's more hope of a fool than of him. Verse 9, speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Uh, verse 9, yes. Mm. Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. You know, I've talked to you many a times about fighting fire with fire, and I've unfortunately done that same thing. We're not, we shouldn't do that. It's not up to us to get even. Because when you fight fire with fire, uh, like I've told you many times, onto these devils, you just go down to their level, and they get a victory. They get a victory. Many people right now, brethren, are saying that they are of us, and they are not. You've got to be careful. You need to consider. We need to consider. Who are you sitting before? Who's feeding you? What are they feeding you? What is the end? Because remember, the most subtle of deception is disguised in the, with the veil, with the facade of Christian. And many Christians are going to be in hell. Many Christians are going to be in hell. Proverbs 4. Then we will be done. Proverbs 4, verses 14, under the close of the chapter. Brethren, sisters, Enter not into the, into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. 
Turn from it and pass away. Verses 14 under the close of the chapter in Proverbs chapter 4. For they sleep not except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. And the morsel that you have eaten will you vomit up and lose your sweet words. We got them. <laughs> For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. The Catholics. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Yeah. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder. Think. Muse. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways established. Be established, excuse me. And let all thy ways be established. Examine yourselves, brethren. Examine yourselves daily. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. These last day's deceptions, brethren, are getting just so horrifically worse as every day passes by. We need to ever be mindful. I, I can't, I, we can't speak about this enough. We can't speak about this enough. We need to be prepared. And we need to examine ourselves every day, brethren. The key to these things that we've talked about today. Like I said, these are things that the Lord showed me going through that uh, Proverbs 23. And um, thank you. Thank you for making it through this if you have. That is going to be it for this video. Um, there's going to be coming a video, Lord willing, where we are going to be speaking about... Dreams, visions, and signs. Maybe, maybe. We'll see what the Lord will have to be done. We're going to be talking about that. Hopefully, Lord willing, uh, I got a calendar right here. That video might come on the 27th. If it doesn't, it will be on the 29th. This Monday, the 28th, is a big day for us. We got a lot of stuff, so we will be incommunicado. But um, anyway, that's what's coming. Got a big video coming. Lots of big videos. Thank you to all of our brethren. Thank you to the Church of the Living God. We love you all so very much. We pray for so many of you. We love you. Look, we, we might not converse as much as we should, as much as we both would like. We might not converse hardly at all. But that doesn't mean that we don't think about you, that we don't pray for you. I mean, the people we pray for, wow. And I'm sorry if that sounds prideful, but... You know, you're not forgotten. Don't think that you are forgotten. Please, please don't think that you are forgotten. So, hmm, that was weird. We love you, brethren. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, I hope this has helped you or that um, the Lord uh, does something with this uh, with you. I know we spent all that time on that one verse. See how, how, see how beautiful that is? In closing, this is what we got to remember. So many of you, I fear, we fear, that in looking to man, that you are replacing a relationship that ought to be there and putting too much focus on men. God uses man. Yes, he does.
But you got to remember, in the beginning, God. And we're going on this theme, if you will, as we are, because I don't want to see anyone get hurt. I want to see anyone get destroyed, have their faith destroyed, because they've put it in a man. And not the man, Christ Jesus. John chapter 2, 1 John chapter 2. Verses 18 on to verse 20. Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. But ye... Church of the living God. Have an unction from the Holy One. And ye know all things. Why? Because you know him who dwells within you. That is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much, brethren, for watching this. If you do, if you do, I'm going to upload this and uh, try to get a hold of some people. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. We love you all so very, very much. And um, just thank you. Thank you. Bow your head. Bow your head. Come on. Lord, thank you for this day. And thank you for what you have given. Thank you for your mercy and your grace that none of us deserve. We don't get what we deserve, Lord. And because of your mercy and your grace, we are upheld today. Lord, um, may you touch people's hearts. May you convict people. May you comfort and bless people as you see fit. And may whoever makes it through this, uh, may you speak to them. May they be encouraged, edified, whatever your will be. May you bless us, lead us, and guide us, and protect us from deception. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and understanding hearts. We just thank you, Lord, and give you the praise, because we are worthless sinners, Lord. Thou, O Lord, art our everything. And we thank you and give you the praise. God's people said, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. We'll see you in the next video.